Um, the central issue of this debate tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is what is wrong with British conservatism? My own answer is not very much. I have never known the British conservative movement to be so confident, so passionate, and so generally united on what needs to be done in this country. Whether on tax, Europe, the Constitution, immigration, conservatives are beginning to set the agenda of debate. It is against conservatives, I suspect very strongly, that the government's main abomination against our civil liberties, the Civil Contingencies Act, was passed last year. There is a large and growing conservative counterculture. If you look at comedians like Jimmy Carr, if you look at television comedy programs like Monkey Dust and Little Britain, those are objectively conservative in their rejection of the politically correct New Labour model. British conservatism is in very good health. The problem is the Conservative Party. <laughs> the Conservative Party has been out of office now for nearly eight years. And even against a government which for corruption and tyranny and incompetence and utter moral bankruptcy is unprecedented in our history, it is almost certain to lose the next election and quite possibly the one after that. <laughs> the central issue is not what is wrong with British conservatism, it is what is wrong with the British Conservative Party. And the answer is that the Conservative Party's function, for at least as long as I've been alive, and perhaps for some time longer than that, has not been to articulate and advance Conservative interests, but to neutralise Conservative opinion. This country is run by the left. The left dominates the administration, it dominates the media, it dominates <coughs> education and much else. The project of the left is to strip us of our historic liberties and indeed to strip us increasingly of our national identity. The problem faced by the left is that it rules a country which is profoundly conservative. The answer is to have a Conservative Party which is not actually Conservative. The answer is to have what some people have called the Quisling Right. A Quisling Rightist is a Conservative who implies promises without making them, and when pushed will make promises without any intention of keeping them. If elected to office, he will do nothing substantial to shake the domination of the left. Oh, he will engage in symbolic politics. He will create much noise over purely incidental issues. But on all that matters, he will not shake or challenge the domination of the left. When he retires from office, he may become the ward of an Oxford College or the Chancellor of one of the new universities, and he'll have all the nice plums that come from non-executive directorships in the city. <coughs> have all of that, and in return, all he has to do is to betray those who voted for him and who trusted him to safeguard all that they hold most dear this side of the grave. Now, until recently, it was difficult for Conservatives to gather in large numbers outside the structures of the Conservative Party. And the structures of that party had been just as good at suppressing internal dissent as the old Communist Party ever yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In recent years, however, Conservatives have been able to come together outside the structures of the Conservative Party and we are increasingly <coughs> agreed that a conservative <coughs> government is not in the interests of British conservatism. 
We believe that if by some miracle the Conservative Party could win the next election, we would have four or five years of much political excitement, many promises of progress, but at the end of that period, we would find ourselves with still fewer of our historic liberties than we started, and still less of our national identity. And speaking for myself and for many other people perhaps in this room and certainly outside, if I must be destroyed, I'd rather be speared in the front by someone who looks me in the eye and calls himself my enemy than garroted from behind by a supposed friend. Yeah, yeah. Now, course, with the approach of an election, we have traditionally felt that magnetic pull. Yes, we've said, these people are trash. They've always broken their promises. But isn't Labour awful? And perhaps this time, these people will do something half decent. Well, it doesn't work now. This generation of the quizzing right is so inept that it can't even tell a straight lie. <laughs> it's not going to win the next election. And that is a wonderfully liberating knowledge. Because they are not going to win the election, there's no point voting for them. We might as well vote for some other party. Will it be UKIP? Will it be Veritas? Will it be some other party yet to be formed? I don't know. But if we're going to vote, if we're going to waste our vote, we might as well vote for a party that says what we believe, so that our votes can be counted and recognised as what they are. And so, to end where I began, British conservatism is in extraordinarily good health. The only problem is, well, of course, the present can't be accepted, the only problem is that we don't have a conservative party. What we have is the quizzing right, and we're not going to vote for it. So that's it. <laughs> I also call myself a libertarian, but a rather different stripe, the one or two hints at the end, which I'd rather not follow up.